Welcome to the musculoskeletal video series. In each video, we will demonstrate a complete joint-specific physical examination. These examinations would be appropriate for a patient with a specific musculoskeletal complaint. Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Newcomer at the Mayo Clinic. I'm a physiatrist. This is my model PJ. Today I'm going to show you a basic shoulder examination. Whenever you do the shoulder examination, it's really important to have the patient either without a shirt on or with a sports bra on or with a gown that you can move around. You need to look at them from the front and then you need to have them turn and you need to look at them from behind too to see if there's any asymmetry um, at all. After inspection, we go on to palpation. When I palpate the shoulder, I like to come from behind that way I'm not right in their face. When you're first starting your exam, it's okay though to be in the front so you can see the structures a little bit better. We'll start with the sternoclavicular joint, which is where this dot is. We follow the clavicle, which does make a little bit of a circuitous route, but make sure you palpate that entire clavicle. And then we get to the AC joint, really common place to have problems in young and old people. Then you come to your acromion, which feels like a shelf right here, and then the shelf dips off into the subacromial space. Another really important area because that's where the rotator cuff lives, and you can, you can often find tenderness in that area. Then I'll come anteriorly, and I'll palpate the long head of the biceps tendon. Again, a very common place to have problems. And if you can't feel it very well, it can be helpful to have the, the, the patient internally and externally rotate, particularly internally rotate their arm and you can feel that biceps tendon moving. It's in the, it's in the intertubercular groove of the um, humerus. Then I come anteriorly and I palpate the coracoid process. The coracoid process is often tender in people even if they don't have problems with it. Then I will palpate the glenohumeral joint, which is deep in here, and if someone has a labral tear or arthritis, degenerative arthritis of their shoulder, that can be tender. Palpating from behind, you also want to look at the scapula and make sure there's no dissymmetry. Dissymmetry on one side, which means that the scapula is protracted out, for example, can indicate a rotator cuff dysfunction. When you palpate the scapula, the scapula is the, starts at T2 and the bottom of it is at T7. The spine of the scapula is at about T3. So just palpate that and make sure that's not tender. Range of motion of the shoulder is very important and gives you a lot of information. If someone has a relatively painless decreased range of motion, that may indicate a structural problem such as a degenerative arthritis. If someone has pain, you want to find out where, and that will give you information as well. First, I'll start with forward flexion. Go ahead and bring your arms all the way up above your head, and then all the way down. It's also important that you make sure they go through the full range, because they may have pain at the very top or problems with, with range at the very top, so you need to make sure you go through the entire range. Abduction also gives you a lot of information. There's a painful arc that a patient with impingement can have between 80 and 120 degrees, which would indicate a problem such as a rotator cuff dysfunction. PJ, I'm going to have you go ahead and do abduction and show me what a painful arc would look like. And then at the top, his pain decreases. And then go ahead and go back down again. I will also look at abduction and flexion from posteriorly to look at the scapulothoracic motion. A typical scapulothoracic motion is glenohumeral to scapulothoracic of two to one. If you see more motion of the scapulothoracic joint, that means that there may be a problem with the glenohumeral joint. I also look at the, the movement of the scapula and compare it from side to side. Once again, scapular dissymmetry can indicate another problem with the shoulder such as rotator cuff dysfunction. So go ahead and do abduction, PJ, of both arms, all the way up. And again, you're looking, and he has good, good scapular symmetry on both sides, and then bring your shoulder back down again. 
and you can see the scapula move with abduction. Internal and external rotation is also very important, and it's important to do it right. If you do internal rotation with your arm out like this, what the patient can do is they can, they can elevate their scapula, and you can see a falsely normal internal rotation. For example, look at my right shoulder. I can elevate my scapula, and it looks like I have normal internal rotation symmetric with the other side. But if I turn around, you can see that my left side goes a lot higher than my right side. So that's a better way of doing internal rotation is putting your hand behind your back and bringing your thumb up. And that will give you a lot more accurate internal rotation than, than just doing it like this. External rotation you can do similarly. You just have the patient bring their arm behind their back and, and try to touch their shoulder blade and you measure where the, the, the level where they can, they can bring their, their finger and then do the other side, PJ, and you compare the two sides. We usually will document this by thoracic level, so this would be about a T5 level. I'd like to show you some special tests for the shoulder. When you do these special tests, it's really important to ask the patient where their pain is located. There are so many structures in the shoulder that can cause pain, and you want to make sure you're testing the proper structure. The first test I want to show you is, is a test for the AC joint. It's called a scarf test. And the way you can think of that is it's like they're putting on a scarf. So what you do is you, you flex the arm to 90 degrees, and then you adduct it across the body. And really what you're doing is you're jamming the AC joint together when you do that. The next two tests I'd like to show you are impingement tests. And remember that impingement typically indicates a rotator cuff problem. So these are, these are good tests if you're worried about a rotator cuff issue. The first is called NEARS. And you can think of this, we're putting the arm near the ear. The way I do this is I, it's a passive test. I flex the arm. And then when I get up here, I bring the thumb down and I bring the arm all the way up above the head and they should have pain at the top of the range. So pain should be up here if it's a positive NEARS test. The next test is called the Hawkins test. The way I think of this is you, it's like you have a hawk on your arm. I, I flex the arm to 90 degrees flex the elbow to 90 degrees. With this test, it's really important to hold down the scapula so that it doesn't raise up like I showed you in that internal rotation test. And then what you do is you just go into a quick internal rotation. And again, you're looking for pain in the region of the subacromial space where the rotator cuff lives. So quick rotation like that, and they should have pain with that. The next test is the empty can test, and this isolates the supraspinatus to determine whether there's any pain or weakness in it. The supraspinatus is the most commonly injured rotator cuff muscle. So the way you do it is you, you actually go into 90 degrees of abduction, and then you bring them forward about 20 degrees. This is called the scapular plane. And you, you have their thumbs down like they're, they're dumping out a can, and then it's, it's a strength test, so hold your arm up and don't let me push down. Now there are a couple scenarios. One is that he's just weak, he just gives out, and that would indicate that there may be a rotator cuff tear. If it's mostly pain, so he can hold it up, but it's painful, that would indicate a tendinopathy or a tendinitis of the rotator cuff. The next test I'm going to show you is the speeds test. This is for the biceps tendon. And the way we do this is 90 degrees of forward flexion. And hold your arm up like this. Don't let me push down. And what I'm doing is I'm stressing the long head of the biceps tendon. So if he's painful right up in here or weak, that would indicate a problem with the biceps tendon. This test is called the Jurgensen's test. It's also for the biceps tendon. I personally don't use this test very often because it's hard to explain to the patient the movement. But it is a commonly used test and it is often a board's question. 
what you do is you, you do a handshake position with the patient, and then you ask them to bring their, their hand up and bring their hand out against resistance. So I am going to resist PJ while he does that. Go ahead and do that again, PJ. And you feel for, you ask them if they have pain over the biceps tendon. You, you also feel the biceps tendon just to ask them if that's where their pain is located. The next test I'd like to show you is O'Brien's test. This is a test for the anterior aspect of the labrum, so they'll have pain in this anterior aspect if it's positive. What you do is you flex to 90 degrees, and then you adduct about 30 degrees. You do it in two positions. You do it with the palm up and the palm down. It should be painful in the palm down if it's positive. And it's, again, against resistance, so PJ, hold your arm up and don't let me push it down and then bring your arm down palm down and don't let me push it up and again that would be more painful right in the anterior aspect of the shoulder if it were a positive O'Brien's test this position is a great position to do internal and external rotation as well because not only can I do we have the scapula stabilized but I can feel for any clicking which could indicate a problem inside of the shoulder this is neutral position, this is external rotation, and this is internal rotation. You also want to compare with the other side to make sure that the, the sides are even. Thank you so much for watching this shoulder physical examination video.